Welcome to Headline Simsbury. I'm Karen Hanville. A little over a year ago, SCTV and the Friends of the Library got together and agreed to jointly purchase video recording equipment for the existing Friends program room and the new program room called the Terrafield program room. What you are seeing are two town employees, Eric and Brian, mounting the final video camera in the Terrafield room. Eric and Brian had just completed mounting the first camera and it was used to record them mounting the final camera. This video clip has been sped up to five times the normal rate. Near the end of 2018, production equipment was installed in the Friends program room and has been used to record and live stream numerous presenters and meetings. The same capability is now available in the new Terrafill room. The new equipment was used on October 29th for the first time for the Parks and Open Space Master Plan Information Session. Now, both library program rooms each have two permanently mounted remote-controlled video cameras, a presentation capture device, video switcher software, and a powerful recording and streaming laptop. Thanks to Mark Orenstein, whose vision saw this project come to fruition. On Tuesday, November 12th, from 10.30 to 12, Simsbury residents and their families are encouraged to attend a discussion of issues related to senior citizens. Representative Hampton, who is vice chair of the legislature's aging committee, will be joined by Connecticut Lieutenant Governor Bysowitz, representatives from AARP, the State Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, the Senior Citizen Advocacy Group for All Ages, the Simsbury Senior Center, and the Aging and Disability Commission. The Issues Affecting Seniors Forum will be held in the Simsbury Public Library new Terrafill Room. Issues will range from prescription drug prices, aging in place, tax exemptions on Social Security and pensions, and other health and wellness issues. For more information or to RSVP, call Representative Hampton's office at 860-240-8568 or email him at john.hampton at cga.ct.gov. Leaf collection will run from November 18th through November 29th. Please note that all leaves must be in biodegradable paper bags. Plastic bags will not be accepted. You can find the biodegradable bags at most hardware stores, grocery stores, and larger retailers. Check the leaf collection schedule for when it will occur in your neighborhood by going to the town's website, simsbury-ct.gov, and checking on the leaf collection schedule from the news section on the homepage. Dates are weather permitting. Residents can also bring bagged leaves to the landfill for free on Wednesdays and Saturdays from 8 to 3. The Simsbury Celebrates Committee invites the public to participate in the annual gingerbread competition and exhibit, one of the most beloved attractions at Simsbury Celebrates. Registration is open until Friday, November 15th, and the forms and the guidelines are available at simsburycelebrates.com and simsburyrec.com. Entry categories include masters, adults, youth, mixed groups, and display only. First, second, and third place winners in each competitive category will be awarded on Sunday, November 24th. The first 35 entrants are guaranteed a coveted spot in the gingerbread competition and exhibit to be viewed by thousands of attendees at Simsbury Celebrates on Saturday, November 30th from 5 to 7 p.m. Chris Carney is here with what's going on at the library. Hi everyone, my name is Chris and I'm an adult services librarian at the Simsbury Public Library. We've got a number of great programs to share with you coming up for the month of November. Did you know that you can catch a movie at the library every Friday afternoon? Skip the hassle of parking and the ticket line. All movies start at 1 p.m. On Tuesday, November 12th at 6.30 p.m., join a literary discussion of Where the Crawdads Sing. The discussion will be led by CCSU English professor Amy Pazorski. Author Doris Dolma will visit the library on Wednesday, November 13th at 6.30 p.m. 
Dolma will discuss her book, Yak Girl, Growing Up in Remote Dolpo, a personal account of growing up on the remote Dolpo region of Nepal and her subsequent adoption by an American family. Lou Norton returns to the library on Thursday, November 14th at 6.30 p.m. to present Armchair Traveler, China. Extra uh, enjoy the extraordinary scenery and take in China's unique blend of modern and ancient from the comfort of your seat. On Friday, November 15th at 7.30 p.m., Grace and Hugh will perform at the library's FSPL Coffee House. Hugh's unique blend of poetic lyrics, soulful singing, and masterful piano playing are sure to make for a memorable performance. Doors open at 7 p.m. On Sunday, November 17th at 2 p.m., join us for a cello and piano recital presented by Hart faculty members Mihai Tettel on cello and Galen Chun on piano. This performance will feature works by Schumann, Schubert, Baccarini, and Beethoven. Do you love the cook? Join us for Cookbook Club on Thursday, November 21st at 1 p.m. Stop by the library to pick, a cop, uh, pick up a copy of this month's cookbook, The Chopped Cookbook by Food Network. Select a recipe to prepare at home, then bring your dish to the library for a taste testing and book discussion. Join the discussion each month or just now and then. Novice cooks welcome. Copies of the cookbook will be available at the library, but space is limited. Finally, author Matthew Dix will discuss his latest book, 21 Truths About Love, on Thursday, November 21st at 6.30 p.m. The book, which follows Dan Mayrock, a down-in-his-luck teacher-turned-bookstore owner, unfolds entirely in lists, making for a unique and touching look at someone trying to be a good husband, business owner, and general human being. These programs are all free to attend, and as always, you can look at our online calendar and register events by visiting www.simsburylibrary.info or calling us at 860-658-7663. Enjoy the remainder of fall, and we'll see you at the library. Join the Farmington Valley Quilters on Wednesday, November 20th at 7 p.m. in Enum Memorial Hall for Jennifer Watchorn's lecture, Organizing Your Quilting Space. Sign-in begins at 645 and guests are welcome for a guest fee of $10. Simsbury Artists Open Studios is pleased to announce their Members One Day Holiday Art Show and Sale on Saturday, November 23rd from 10 to 4 at the Simsbury Free Library. Original artwork by Rita Bond, Lori Rassico Burroughs, Amy Conover, Grace Epstein, Jackie Jakubowski, Deborah Leonard, and Karen Sweezy will be available for purchase. Visit simsburyartist.org for more information. Marianne Bannon is here with information about this year's Turkey Trot. My name is Marianne Bannon, and you guessed it. The Turkey Trot is just around the corner. This year marks the 27th annual Jack Bannon Memorial Turkey Trot to benefit FoodShare. The one-day event will be on Wednesday, November 20th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We hope to reach a goal of collecting 2,700 turkeys and $27,000 in monetary donations as a follow-up to the tremendous outpouring of support last year. For early risers, we will accept contributions beginning at 4.30 a.m at Simsbury Stop and Shop, where you can personally present your donations to Scott Haney of WFSB-TV. He will be broadcasting live there until 7 a.m. This event was started by my dad, Jack Bannon, in 1993 to benefit FoodShare and demonstrates the incredible difference that one person can make. What a wonderful legacy I've inherited of giving back to the community and helping others in need. From our humble beginnings, collecting 269 turkeys that first year, my dad's dedication gradually paid off. He was highly motivated to prevent hunger from his personal experience as a starving prisoner of war in Germany during World War II. He also had a tremendous supporter at FoodShare, the former executive director, Gloria McAdam. Gloria became a great friend of my father's and mine. Sadly, Gloria lost her battle with brain cancer earlier this year. We wish to dedicate the turkey trot this year to Gloria's memory. Without her encouragement and support, the turkey trot may not have grown into the tremendous event it's become, encompassing stores and schools in Avon, Canton, 
Granby, Bloomfield, and Simsbury. Our efforts continue today because the need still exists. Today, the Turkey Trot is the largest single day collection event for food share, and we know it makes a major difference for families, not only on Thanksgiving, but throughout the year. I hope you will consider making a donation to the Turkey Trot in memory of Gloria McAdam or someone who's made a difference in your life. We will be collecting turkeys, non-perishable items, cash or checks made payable to FoodShare on Wednesday, November 20th. Please come out and see us at Fitzgerald's, Cane's or Stop and Shop in Simsbury, Miller Foods or Big Y in Avon, Geisler's or Stop and Shop in Granby, ShopRite of Canton, or Bloomfield Geisler's. Donations can be dropped off at our tractor trailers behind Henry James Memorial School in Simsbury throughout the day. On behalf of my family and our volunteers, thank you for your generosity and ongoing support as we carry on my dad's and Gloria's legacies. I extend my personal thanks to my dedicated committee members who give so generously of their time and energy. This event would simply not be possible without you. Most importantly, I want to express my gratitude to the huge number of volunteers that come out the day of this event, including members of our fire and police departments. My unending appreciation to our corporate donors for providing services to our event, including Wilmarth & Associates, Liberty Bank, Bazudos, Syracuse Moving & Storage, Harvest Cafe, Signs Plus, Suburban Sanitation, Vincent Funeral Home, Gifts of Love, and Avon Self Storage. A heartfelt thank you to our participating grocery stores who provide access to their premises, create special incentives, and give customers an opportunity to conveniently join in this worthy effort. Please support these businesses who add so much to our quality of life in our community. For more information or to volunteer, please call me at 860-668-5352 or Harold Erickson at 860-965-0301. The true essence of community is defined by neighbors helping neighbors. Please join us in this effort on Wednesday, November 20th. Best wishes for a wonderful holiday season with your family and friends. Thank you. Join the Girl Scouts to paint some of the 350 rocks that will become part of a town-wide scavenger hunt in celebration of Simsbury's 350th anniversary in the spring of 2020. This free intergenerational project by the organization For All Ages offers a joyful way to spend an afternoon. Monthly painting sessions will be held in the craft room at Eno Memorial Hall on Mondays from 4 to 5.30 p.m. And those dates are November 18th, December 9th, January 13th, February 10th, March 9th, and April 6th. Please sign up in advance at the Senior Center. Nick, Ethan, and Sutton are here to tell you about the Theater Guild's upcoming production of A Christmas Carol. Hello, my name is Nick Parisi and for five performances this November, I'll be playing Ebenezer Scrooge, the despised miser of Charles Dickens' famous tale, A Christmas Carol, reimagined as a heartwarming musical. With music by Alan Menken, whose credits include Disney's Beauty and the Beast and The Little Mermaid, and lyrics from Lynn Ahrens of ragtime and Susical fame, this joyous show will please all ages as it celebrates the spirit of the coming holidays. I play the elderly version of Scrooge, but let me introduce my younger selves who can shed light on my transformation into a bitter old miser. Ethan Quinn plays Scrooge as a young boy. I learned my first lesson as my father was being dragged off to debtor's prison when he said to me, save your pennies, make your fortune, and keep it. Save your pennies. Sutton Kaler portrays Scrooge as a young man just starting out in business. I was so focused on making and saving my pennies that I lost Emily, the love of my life. As she left, she said to me, you love nothing quite so much as gold. 
you'll also meet four ghosts, three of whom lead me through my past, present, and future, forcing me to recognize my faults. Happily, I repent my selfish ways, greeting Christmas morning with a cheerful Happy Christmas, rather than my usual bah humbug. A Christmas Carol will be presented by the Theatre Guild of Simsbury at the Simsbury High School on November 16th, 22nd, and 23rd at 7.30 p.m. Sunday matinee performances will be November 17th and 24th at 2 p.m. You may purchase tickets online at www.theaterguildsimsbury.org. See you there, enjoy the show, and God, God bless, bless us, everyone. everyone. Mary Doyle Clark is here with What's Going On at the Senior Center. Hi, I'm Mary Doyle Clark, and here's what's going on at the Simsbury Senior Center. Join us for an afternoon of classical music on Sunday, November 17th, from 2 to 3.30 p.m. at the Simsbury Library. Cellist Mihai Titao and pianist Galen Chun, faculty members at the Hart School, will perform works by Schumann, Schubert, Baccarini, and Beethoven. This event is co-sponsored by the Simsbury Senior Center and the Public Library. You may register at either location. Create one-of-a-kind cards for family and friends at our holiday card-making workshop on Monday, November 18th from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Choose from a wide variety of stamps, including Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, and New Year's. All materials are provided and no experience is necessary. Sign up for this free class through the Senior Center. The Spinner's Twirl Team will be at the Senior Center to perform their Simsbury Celebrates program from 6 to 7 p.m. on Monday, November 18th. The Spinners teach the skill of baton twirling to youths from 5 to 18. The performance will take place in the auditorium and refreshments will also be served. Please register for this free performance through the Senior Center. The Senior Center and Public Library are co-sponsoring an AARP Smart Driver course from 1 to 5 p.m. on Tuesday, November 19th at the library. The course will teach you current rules of the road and defensive driving techniques and how to accommodate age-related changes in your vision, hearing, and reaction time. The, cost co the course costs $15 for AARP members and $20 for non-members. Payment can be made by cash or check on the day of the course. Please register at the library or the Senior Center. The Simsbury Senior Center is located at 754 Hot Meadow Street in the Eno Memorial Hall building. Our hours are Mondays, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., Tuesday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call us at 860-658-3273 for additional information or go to our website. Thanks for watching. See you at the Senior Center. On October 24th, Simsbury High School Interim Principal Stephen Petrina hosted an annual breakfast reception to acknowledge the academic excellence of 17 members of the senior class of 2020 who achieved the distinction of being named a commended student and four students who further achieved semifinalist status as recognized by the National Merit Scholarship Program and the National Achievement Scholarship Program. There are approximately 1.6 million students nationwide who take the qualifying preliminary SAT and National Merit Scholarship qualifying tests, usually in the student's junior year. Petrina announced each student's name and awarded each a certificate of achievement. Family members were invited to the reception and many high school faculty and counseling staff stopped by to congratulate the students whom they had taught or guided throughout their school career. Mark Rudowitz is here to talk about the Heroes and Hounds program. Hello, this is Mark Rudowitz, your animal control officer here in the town of Simsbury. However, today we're not going to speak of animal control issues. I am speaking of a program we run through the Simsbury Police Department called Heroes and Hounds. 
Um, as many of you know, I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran, and prior to coming here in this wonderful town of Simsbury, I was a Hartford police lieutenant, spending many years uh, as a supervisor and working with our canine unit, both actually and also the United States Marine Corps too. And so the program uh, that we, we designed and what I've been running now for our 10th successful year since 2009 is designed uh, that we support our working uh, military canine units. So this is the time of year we start asking for donations, soliciting donations to send uh, care packages and other uh, equipment and food items to our soldiers and our working dogs overseas. We've successfully sent literally upwards of 3,000 care packages all over Iraq and Afghanistan, throughout the Middle East uh, military bases, and of course now including several other bases that are uh, abroad. Um, you know, when you think about our dogs as, uh, you know, the canines, I can tell you from firsthand experience, with all the money and technology we put into uh, detection work, and namely in the military and, and many of our, can our police canines, it's for uh, explosive devices or bombs, roadside bombs in plain English. But with all the money and technology, do you know, some, uh, do you know nothing still beats the nose of that canine? Absolutely, those dogs have allowed countless young American men, women and men to get back home to, their, to American soil to be reunited with their family safely. Um, I can speak firsthand. The other thing these dogs provide when they're outside overseas at a base is there somewhat of a comfort because most people, face it, most people, folks, have dogs. We have our pet dogs and our companion animals. And when you're, when you're, when you're around a canine, whether it's a working dog or not, particularly when you're 10, 12,000 miles from home, it provides, it, it brings that person much closer to home because most people are dog owners. So it's it's actually a way for even the, the, the soldiers or the Marines or the airmen or what, and it's, we service all branches of the military, but it's a way for them to decompress. Now each package we send are um, everything for the dogs from Nyla Bones, Kongs, uh, chew toys, pull toys, something called doggles, which is basically a glasses uh, like a pair of sunglasses for a dog. Because if you think about it, folks, when they're out in the Middle East, it's very windy. And a lot of the times the dogs are the canines, the soldiers and the canines are deployed from helicopters. So when you think about the rotation of the, the, the helicopter between the wind stirring up and sand, it protects their eyes. And when they're out in the field too, it also gets very windy. Uh, so it protects their eyes from the sand. Uh, the soldiers, uh, the human part of this gets... Treats, whether it's uh, granola bars, peanuts, coffee, and, you know, uh, cans of coffee, foot creams, soaps, shampoos, uh, you know, and, you know, toothpaste, toothbrushes, dental floss. I also try to include some kind of a, a book, whether it's a crossword puzzle book or a Sudoku book, um, and also like a, sometimes a movie, uh, usually a comedy. You know, I don't want to send them band the brothers when they're out overseas already so we try to set them something kind of lighthearted, funny that's uh going to take their mind off of where they are and what their what their task is at least for that moment uh the dogs also we include eye wash ear wash shampoo for them as well um and several other comfort items i mean we've sent dog beds cooling vest that keep them cool because the average temperature temperature there's about 118 degrees upwards of 130 degrees on certain days. So cooling vest and ballistic vests we send, uh, which is obviously to protect them from uh, any uh, you know, ammunition or an explosion. So we really successfully since 2009 have been able to support, wonderfully support our military working dogs and our soldiers. So I'm asking the folks to please consider this season Coming up, it's already at the end of October, almost near November. So uh, to make a donation and to feel, please feel, call me at Simsbury Police Department for further information. 860-658-3110 is my direct number. I would be glad to explain further in detail about the program. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to getting, us, uh, you know, donations from the public. The public has been tremendous in the past, and I'm sure we can count on your support this year. And the other thing before I close is every package is done on a very personal level. I've been fortunate enough to have a, a direct contact with all the military uh, entities, all branches rather, 
And so everything is done very personal, meaning that every package has a soldier or a Marine or an airman or a sailor's name or a Coast Guard and their canine name. So it's just not a generic giveaway. Uh, so everything's done at a personal level. And then I bring all our packages up. We bring them to Westover Air Force Base and they get shipped out. So I'm very proud and honored to still serve our community and serve our military in that capacity. So thank you once again for your time and attention and consideration in assisting us in supporting our United States military and our working canine units. Thank you. The not-for-profit Farmington Valley Trails Council will hold its annual meeting on Friday, November 15th at 6.30 p.m. at the Avon Senior Center, 635 West Avon Road, the Sycamore Recreation Park in Avon. Admission is free and refreshments will be served. The guest speaker this year is Marge Nichols, who will present her slideshow, Bicycling Across Cambodia. Marge, Marge and two friends bicycled 200 miles across central Cambodia and explored many ancient temple ruins, paddled through a floating village on a giant lake, biked country roads, and visited a crocodile farm. Visit www.fchtrail.org for more information. On October 11th, National Coming Out Day, community members gathered to paint the newly designed installation of the Rainbow Crosswalk. If you missed it, here is a glimpse. We hope you enjoyed this program and we invite your feedback. Contact SCTV at 658-1720 or email me at karen at simsburytv.org. If you're interested in volunteering here or have questions or you're just curious, we invite you to visit us in the lower level of Eno Memorial Hall. If you have something to say or share, Simsbury residents can produce non-commercial programming in our studio for free. If you need to catch up on a town meeting or missed the Coyote Forum, visit our website, simsburytv.org, to watch programs on demand or subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Karen Hanville. We are SCTV, your town, your schools, your government. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.